Bueno, uh, hello everybody. I'm here um, in South America and um, uh, a friend asked me from Crap TV if I can tell you something about Relay. Um, I know that um, Relay uh, uh, win these elections in Argentina because he said, hey, I'm an anarcho-capitalist. Uh, I really love what he says because I am too. I love anarchy, I love capitalism. I'm just a free uh, market guy, you know, here I sell these little cars. Um, and um, so uh, he went to the World Economic Forum in Switzerland and he actually had quite some critics about them. So I heard that many people of you guys loved what he said, they, you love what, he, what uh, he stands for. I can really hear that because for me liberty is still a big thing and I'm willing to pay the price for it, which is just as easy as responsibility. And so if you like what he said, it really shows you have heart. But I must also admit that uh, we are in Argentina and we are used to politicians who say one thing and do another thing. So uh, I basically just want to tell you that whenever he criticizes the World Economic Forum, it's really nice what he says, but it doesn't really mean that he is not a part of the uh, New World Order and the World Economic Forum. Um, let me explain. So, what we have to know is um, how is this thing called politics? Well, of course, if um, you want to be politicians, uh, you cannot just go by your own with a good heart and say, hey, I have some good ideas, people vote for me, and then I'm going to do that. Uh, this is not how it works. Uh, politics is like this. Of course, when you want to win elections, you have to say something nice. I mean, you have to, to convince the people to vote for you. This is one thing. The other thing is actually you need some powerful people behind you. Because it's not given and you need to be in the press, you need to uh, pay a lot of money for the campaign and many things. So basically, politicians are set there to elections by some powerful people. So you need actually powerful people who will support you. So as you know, why are they powerful people? It's because they kind of like the power and they, um, yeah, they have a lot of money. So whenever they do something, they don't do it for free. Uh, they actually want something from you. So if you're lucky and you got elected, you actually would have to pay off your debts. It means like all these people who put you in power, they want something in change. Sometimes it's a, it's a, like a, a new law. Uh, there is like a yeah certain things you have to do. Maybe sell something off from your country, whatever. You're in big debt. So often the thing you said in your campaign and um, to clear these debts, they don't really match together. Um, yeah. Like Millet said, hey, I, I love the free markets, you know, I want to uh, free the markets. I don't want to have like a, this communism stuff that you cannot sell and trade and stuff. Uh, I want it free. And I love what he said. And I always went in Buenos Aires to the Parque Rivadavia and I sold these little tiny cars. It was just a Sunday morning when uh, the people meet who sell these stinky toys, matchbox cars. And it's a super easy algorithm. It's like a three-letter algorithm. It's like Parque Rivadavia, little tiny cars, and Sunday. So it doesn't need anything. There is no uh, state structure. It's just we meet there and we sell these things. This is called free market. It's called anarcho-capitalism. That's what stands for our president. But uh, 1st of January, actually, they forbid this market and I cannot sell my cars anymore. I made a good living out of it, I could feed my family, and I cannot do this anymore. So I came here to Uruguay, a friend, he, he borrowed me a booth, so I can actually survive in Argentina. As you know, we had like a 300% inflation in one month. So, whenever you party uh, Millet, uh, I think it really shows you have a good heart, you want a free world, me too. But it shows also you a little bit naive. You think that what he says is what he's gonna do. So, um, you know, 
uh, it's really not like this. He's completely in the new world order and in the new world order designed and planned by the World Economic Forum. So, as you know, uh, well, powerful people, they actually... So, uh, yeah, history pretty much shows that uh, politicians, they don't uh, do what they say. Uh, there is even, there is actually a way how to know if maybe politicians are good or bad. Um, if they were killed, they might have been good. So you have some in your history, like Lincoln, Kennedy, so they really wanted to go against the powerful people. And uh, yeah, the result is that they just get killed. So just, um, we have to excuse our politicians. I can hear that. I don't want to get killed. So I, I know I would probably do the same, you know. Uh, I'm happy that I'm not a politician. And, um, yeah, but why do they do that? Well, here we have to go into psychology. We have to know what happened to these people because uh, nobody of you or us would believe how can they do such horrible things like a war and so So you have to be amputated of empathy completely to do so. And you have to be a liar and nobody noticed. Well, they actually are. Um, they get voted because they lie super nice. And how come they lie so good? Well, it's basically because they are self-protecting brains. What well, is a self-protecting brain? I explain. What is a self-protecting brain? Well, it's actually uh, a self-defense uh, of your brain uh, that normally you make uh, when in your childhood is when you basically, you know, you. Um, you find a, a secret or something, you know, ground and you play with it and then uh, uh, you put it in your mouth and then comes your father and he, he shouts at you, ah, you cannot do this, and, ah, he grabs your arm and so, and you get attacked uh, by your parents somehow or you feel attacked. And then you do what you always do when you feel attacked, you cry and you want to get back to the belly, back in the arms of your father. Uh, parents, of your father, of your mom. And so now there is a big problem. The attacker and the salvation, the cavalry, is the same person. And you need to call your parents uh, for help. And your brain that doesn't uh, forget anything actually still remember that your parents can attack you really badly. So how you manage this? Well, there you become a self-protecting brain. You actually cut off these two experiences in your brain, physically. It's not a cut, it's like more a, a tube, you, you make it more small, so the information will not travel in your brain, both brain parts, let's say it like this. But you self-protect your, your brain from this influence, and uh, actually you can, you can survive and you can call your parents and you remember that sometimes they yell at you really bad. And, um, but this uh, amputation, I call it, is not for free. What, what does uh, die with that is actually your empathy. You cannot uh, watch yourself from outside and you cannot get in the other person's side and you can do stuff that only somebody can do who has no empathy. You can start wars, you can just for your own profit, you can do uh, poison the world, you can do a lot many things. So, unfortunately, most of the politicians we vote today, they have this brain damage. Uh, if it's really bad, we call them psychopaths or, or sociopath, which really doesn't help because these people, they just wanted to survive. Uh, they are really good-hearted people, but they have a little brain damage. And they can lie much better than somebody would actually uh, tell his true believings. So that's why they're always voted. You probably have 99% of psychopaths, or no, of self-protecting brains in politics. So um, this is the problem. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you a little story how I came here. I actually went to the coast with my car and my gearbox get uh, blocked in the dunes. And um, yeah, I got I got some help from the mechanic. He said, "Oh, I I gonna fix this, you know, cheap, like two hundred fifty dollars. I take it down and put it up, and uh, I gonna fix it." You know? So um, I believed him, and he was a really nice guy. And it took more than a day, another a week, and so the price went up. And 
However, uh, at the end, I got the car, it was pissing oil, and um, uh, it broke down immediately after 40 kilometers, and I noticed that um, somebody found my treasure in the car, which was worth maybe $2,000. It's not much, but for me, it's, it's, it was all I had, and I couldn't believe, wow. And I looked in the gearbox, there was not even um, uh, fat grease inside, and uh, Everything that he made, he made it super bad. There were no bolts at the, there were only two bolts for maybe eight uh, from the gearbox. The, the arranque, like the, the starter, wasn't attached. All like that. And you say, how can they do that? Well, it's the same like politicians, you know. They are self uh, protecting brains. And if you look at this guy, he beats the shit out of, out, out of his children. So it explains everybody, everything that. Uh, it's not his fault. It was his childhood. So, uh, what what can we do about these people? Uh, we actually have to live with them. And if you have a one a one uh, legged guy, you will not ask for him to run around the block with you because he just can't. If you want to ask for empathy from like self protecting brain, he, he cannot do it. And he actually had to amputate this for his surviving. So, if you get mad at him, you actually make it worse, because all they need is love, like the people say, the Beatles says, and um, it will not make this world better. So we should not give the power to people who cannot uh, handle it because of lack of empathy, and we should actually hug them. I mean, Millet is a really nice guy, he speaks against the World Economic Forum, even Klaus Schwab and all these powerful people, they use power as a substitute of love. So they are hardly blessed people and um, they would need our help, but we would not need them in power. So, however, it just happened, we will have, we will live with, with Millet and he will sell off the country, he will tell nice stuff, and, uh, but uh, it really will not change the world. Uh, uh, I'm um, uh, like for Track TV, uh, Pedro Pistola, uh, live from Uruguay. And uh, yeah, just don't get mad at me with what you hear, don't worry, this is Track TV, we just tell bullshit. And um, um, whatever, if you want to know more about the self protecting brains, I didn't invent it, I read some books, for example, from Arno Grün, Verratene Liebe, Falsche Götter, something like that. Or um, Bombe im Gehirn, a bomb in your brain, uh, which is a video on YouTube. Um, actually, there are psychoanalysts who know much better than me. But um, my family situation, I had to handle with uh, self protecting brains, so I'm learning on it. And um, yeah, I wish you a wonderful day. And yeah, we, the people with heart and not amputated empathy, we have to take care of the world and hug to the all self protecting. People. So have a nice day, have a good time, um, we love you. So, you actually say what politicians say, say nice things to get elected. Well, actually, uh, it also happens that they can tell any bullshit and not uh, put together a phrase that more or less coherent. You know who I'm talking about, uh, Joe Biden. He actually uh, would never got elected for what he said or what he stands for. No, he got elected for what he not stands for, what he not is. He's definitely not Donald Trump. And maybe he got a little bit help from the voters machine. And um, if you think, wow, they would never, uh, you know, fraud with the voters machine, that sounds really nice from you. You're not a self-protecting brain. You cannot imagine how good a self-protecting brain uh, is managing lies and can lie to you with not even getting read. And um, so, uh, well, we will have to learn and handle uh, not to run with a one-legged guy or to uh, need empathy from somebody who just can ha can't have it. Uh, that's it. That's all. Well, have still a nice time and uh, free run.